Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Plank and Sell Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back and relax, and let's welcome your host, Blake, Sal, and Mark! When I teach masturbation, I'm always just like, have fun with it. Maybe she won't rock you, she knows everything that I mean. That's the prettiest I can lose my game. Shittiest that can be, I bet. Waiting around to lose some time, trying to make believe. What are you gonna do? Don't you do you want to do that? You say no friends, you know you just want to say no sense like the devil's got you. Waiting all night, cause now I'll have to lie. You never chance, here we go, I got you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Blake and Sal Show with Mark, episode number 484. I'm your host, Blake, and I'm getting to the age where I actually got really excited because I got brand new pots and pans yesterday, and I got to try, I got to hit, unpack them today, and I got really excited about that today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting to that age. It's happening now. Actually, I need new pots and pans, too, so I'll be right there with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be on my co-host, first of all. The biggest thing I'm podcasting. I have nothing witty to say today, so I'm just going to say, Mr. Sal Halden himself. Sal, how you doing? <laughs> um, wonderful. What the hell was that at the very beginning? Well, I forgot that was there. I forgot that was there. It was like, this is the new Blink-182. Dan with me. Wait. I forgot about the album cut. Because I, I listen to it uh, on like, all the time, and I forgot that was there. <laughs> that, that's on the album cut. Yeah, I completely forgot that was there. <laughs> did, it, did it get a reading on the album but, cover? No, it but that's the point. It's the album version. It's not the radio version. So I just forgot it was there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all that was. Uh, anyway, wow. let's bring out our co-host, the man who the legend, the man who, for some reason, every night at dinner, he cannot not bring in wrestling conversation into an. We're not talking wrestling. I don't find a way to run a wrestling poet for no reason whatsoever, with no segue or nothing. Mark, Dad, how you doing? <laughs> Doing well. <laughs> this is every night. I swear to God, this is every night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost every night. Yeah, okay, I- I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. For no context, there is zero context to this. We're sitting on a constituency talking about school stuff. And all of a sudden, for no reason whatsoever, that's like, is that like one lucky punch from Logan Paul? <laughs> no context. <laughs> Nothing to do with the conversation at all. <laughs> 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 you know, to do with anything. Here, here's, here's the thing. I think his brother Jake is more talented than he is, but he just doesn't want to admit it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Although I do want to shout out to um, one of my fellow buddies, um, Phil, who decided to try to at Logan Paul to get attention to my video from last week's show. <laughs> Dad ran for last week's show. Yes. <laughs> that was pretty funny last week. So I just I want to shout out Phil for that because I did not expect that. And that was pretty funny. <laughs> one lucky punch up one. One lucky punch up, one lucky ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was last oh. week. Oh, um, okay. We have a little bit of comments from TikTok after the break. A little bit. It's not it's actually for once. It's nothing negative. It's actually something something funny. I, I like that. And Ooh, confirmation like from that. a friend of mine. This is a nice read to face. So we'll get into all that in a few minutes. By the way, so I, I'm warning people listening right now. This might be a short and normal because I don't have much of a voice, and Sal is dealing with allergies as well. This weather fucking sucks. Right now, like uh-huh. hell, this weather sucks. I don't know what's like by you, but this last night we went to bed. We had our window open a little bit. Just to have some air circulation in the room, nothing major. Wake up this morning to a torrential downpour, breeze, <laughs> windy. It's fucking hell. And I'm like, what the hell is going on outside? <laughs> Monday, <laughs> Monday was almost seventy here, which it was, was really like nice. That. It was like that last week too here, and then it was like forty two yesterday, and I'm like, like well, there we go. So yeah. That, I mean, so, if this show goes a little short today, that's why, because being still don't have much voices today. Uh, it's not our fault. It's just allergies. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're not taking a COVID test live on the podcast like another show I know this week. <laughs> we'll, get that. We'll, <laughs> we'll plug that show after the break. <laughs> okay. Oh, and by the way, Sal, I have something additional on the soundboard. I need to edit the soundboard a little bit. Fuck them kids. Okay. That is not more now. What? What? No Logan Paul, one lucky punch up, one lucky ass. Mm. Fuck 
them kids. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess I got my answer. Uh, so, all right, let's actually get started. So, before I lose my voice, help support the show for all the time you can find the show and other products we work on at theblakeandsouthshow.com. So, uh, you can buy our shirts, stickers, hoodies, Apple iPads, and more from our mm-hmm. T Public store. <laughs> Click on the T Public link on our website or go to T Public and search the Blake and South Show. Hey, do we have the Blake and South Show with, with Merck smart watches in yet? No. Not all I'd have to actually I, I can't I always forget <laughs> to bring my work folder over here because I do have a Blake and South Show sticker on my work folder. Like I put it in the living room. I, I always forget to bring it in here for a show. <laughs> so I actually have a Blake and South Show sticker. I got like a whole bunch of podcast stickers and decorated my work bag. I work on my work folder. I got a brand new work folder. So I'm like, I, it's all plain and ordinary. I got a whole bunch of stickers for it. <laughs> so, so does that mean this, you also have a Blake and South Show with Mark clipboard? No. You know, I, have a, I, have, <laughs> I have a clipboard. Folder. I have a sticker. How we use clipboards anymore? Doctors. Yes. Oh, I guess. <laughs> you didn't have to answer, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> What's gonna break? I'll come right back. All right. Um, go pick up Mandy's book. I know I am available right now. Oh, there it is. There's the book. Uh, right That's now, I turned off my my thing. And, <laughs> and and maybe if you're a lucky one, you can. Get an autographed copy. There it is. <laughs> uh, available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Orange Hat Publishing in English and in Spanish. I might just have to take that and actually um put that uh, put that on the book page, book and sticker page. <laughs> <laughs> the sticker on the book. There you go. Anyway, um, there, is, is that, there actually, if you go on our in our store, there is actually I know I am merchandise that nobody ever buys, but it's there. If anyone wants anything from the book, <laughs> it's like you can get merchandise from the book there. So I, that's pretty. They cool. know they are, but they don't want to be. Yeah, well, it's like it's like I, it's actually how I made the T-shirt that I made for uh, that I wear all the time to her book events. Time at the T-shirt. Just, <laughs> just look at it as Christmas presents. Um, the Indeed. Manny Show is back this week. Finally, I've taken about a month off. Um, that if you really want to hear somebody take a COVID test live on a podcast, that's the show to listen to. <laughs> so go, go listen to that this week, as well as a lot of other things going on. They did it under an hour and covered so much stuff from when I was told. So. So go listen to that. And by the way, they're branching out to actual music opening and closing their shows now. Oh. So I, just, I had to explain music rights to one of the hosts today. Ah, <laughs> I, explain that. I haven't had that conversation today. I haven't had that conversation in like a decade. I had that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Also, um, also hang on a second. Let me hug up here. If you haven't voted yet, you can still vote for the Blake and South Show Awards. Um, voting going a little earlier than planned due to some scheduling changes here. So you got about two more weeks to vote. Um, the voting actually has been really good. It's actually been fun because it's actually really even for a change. It's not like it's only like a one massive blowout. Everything else is pretty even, and it's nice to watch. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. So go vote yeah. the link in the description of the show right now. Oh, I timed that perfectly. I timed that perfectly. I really, I did right as I finished that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was perfect. Can we, can we do that again? No, I, there's no way I can do that twice in one. There's no way with my voice how it is, I could do that twice. Um, so, um, That's what she said. <laughs> I walked into that one. I really did walk into that one. That's what she said. Ah. All right. Lay uh, down into that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess you oh, could. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be fun today. Um, okay, so um, remember about a month ago we were joking about Adam Cole and MJF dancing, the whole thing we were yes. talking about on the show. And if it's yes. a clip, and if, if for those you missed it, it's on my TikTok page. And um, after this, I I've been this week's announcer for the show. But let's talk about first. Uh, MJF does not have rhythm. Is it Adam Cole? This is Adam Cole. Ooh. Yeah, but Adam Cole's he's Jewish. Tried. What do you expect? Time, 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 time. Did you just say Jewish men don't have women? Is that what you just said? Have yeah. you ever seen Jewish men dance? No, I can't say I have. I mean. So there you go. Know. <laughs> they can't. Oh my Moving God. I have to. Let the hateful messages on TikTok begin. I did not do that one. So. First of all, there was no hateful messages. As a matter of fact, a lot of people thought it was pretty funny, actually. So, that, so that, that's number one. Um. Number two, I have a friend, Davina, called from, from, from Never Knocked Out Crew and um, a Keo Crew. 
And she, proud Jewish woman, absolute proud Jewish woman, her daughter's in Temple, all this kind of stuff. So she goes, on, she's on my TikTok, she's on her TikTok, and she's this one. She had to comment. You know she had to comment. There's no way. I can only want to talk. So she responds in her quote, Jewish men can dance to your resident Jewish friend. So Sal, you are absolutely 100% right. <laughs> how, about, how about that? Now, now, keep in mind, this sure is, Keep in mind, this is actually a friend. Watch what you say, because I have a friend. She's actually a good friend of mine. And she sent me a voice message. Yes. <laughs> this is actually the oh. same person. This is more for dad than for you, Sal. Okay. And this is actually what she said to me in a voice, best, a voice memo on my phone. Whoever said oi V, they said it wrong. It is oi they. Oi they. Oi they. And come on the show as a guest appearance, and I will correct them all. And no, Jewish men can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> See, I say it correctly because I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm an ally, so. Oi, Oi, they. Oh, oh my. I, I, I promised her. I, I promised her weeks ago. I bring it up. But we've had guests and chaos of the show, so I had to bring it up this week when we okay. have a lot going on. <laughs> so, a, a, ask your friend if I'm saying this right. Mushugana. <laughs> I will ask her later. Right. <laughs> I'll ask her later. Yeah. Oh man! So there you go. I had to bring that up. That was our TikTok thought. I found that for a couple of weeks. I had to bring that up here. <laughs> so let's do this. And now let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. So what's fun about this week is there's not a whole lot going on, which is a nice change of pace for us. And like mm-hmm. I said before, we of the show, we have a couple pay per views in a couple of weeks. So I um, may have guests on, guest on next week. So that's always good too. But um, so we'll cover the few things that are covered, but the big item. Um, first of all, right after we were done with the show last week, it was announced right before Dynamite for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, we don't know why yet. Mm-hmm. Um, AEW has signed Rick Flair to a multi-year contract. I thought it was just for the Sting storyline. Apparently it's not. Um <laughs> that's just wild to me. But apparently, also, it ties in with now Woo Energy Drinks. He's an energy drink. By the way, yeah, Ric Flair has an energy drink. I'll figure that one out. Yeah, wait, whoo, that, that's a thing now? It is a thing. I do that with a thing, but I didn't know how legit it was. Apparently, it's a I thing. I want to try that. it. Can we Can we get them to, like, ship us some? That would be awesome. It's now the official energy drink of AEW. Um, apparently, apparently, this is a lot like WCW when they signed um, the Macho Man and they Slim Jim paid for half his contract. Okay. That's what this deal sounds like. Ah, smart. So he's not paying for half his contract. It's coming through. But I find it funny that Ric Flair's paying himself. <laughs> yeah, it is. That, uh, it? I it also read it. that Woo Energy Drinks will be available at all AEW shows. Oh, that's a duh. <laughs> it'll be sold out in minutes. Well, and more. They won't have enough, but it'll be sold out in seconds. Like everything else in the car. And then it'll and be $100 also, on eBay. Can it be also sell it on the AEW website? Probably you're ready to do. Well, I don't know. Pro Wrestling Tees runs their things. I don't know what they're doing, how they're doing that. I Actually, mean, that's a terrific question. So, you would do okay. that. Yes. So, so that my other question would be Would this be competition for Logan Paul's Prime? No, because people actually buy Prime. Yeah, but how many people know about Ooh yet? It's all over the place. It's actually all over the internet. You just don't know okay. about it, but I see it everywhere. I see it everywhere <laughs> on Pro Wrestling side of things. But the so, problem, Logan Paul has been smart about this. And as much as you hate the guy, he has been smart about promoting his drink. And, like, it's everywhere. Like, I walk into any yeah. station, and it's there. Every single right. one I go. I go into a lot, especially on Tuesdays when I'm driving around the state. Mm-hmm. And they're everywhere. They're, like, it's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're in uh, Speedway the Crypt Crypt. They're in Speedway the Crypt Chips everywhere around the state. Right. But, like, yeah. why does it, the bottom of these can't say mushroom blend? I have no idea. That's a good question. Mm. That doesn't sound very appealing. But they have strawberry, banana, lemon, and dragon fruit. Oh, there you go. There you, go. Uh, you can definitely buy them on their official website. I'm trying to see if it's in stores. Okay. By the way, while we're plucking random beverages, um, in two days, the Let's Go Double podcast that I, I listen to, they're open, they have their own beer coming out in two days. Uh, um, yeah, today's the it's when the people who are just on the 10th, they have their own beer coming out in Jersey. It's called Ant Crew Beer. Oh. And um, I'm hoping to pick them up when we're out there for the stadium series. Oh, now, no. so, okay. So, yeah, yeah that'd be great. It's an official, it's an it's the official beer made by the Let's Go Double podcast called Ant Crew Beer. It's coming out on Friday this week officially. Oh, cool. It's, it's already available at Stop Shop Rights throughout New Jersey. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Found that out. I just found that out. I found that out in the last couple of weeks. So, there you go. 
So, does, does anybody else have an energy drink they want to plug? No, no, we did not. They were good. Uh, moving on, let's start WWE. Crown Jewel happened this past weekend, and I'm not going to lie. The first half of the show, and I said this to Mandy, and she got to chuckle out of it because she didn't watch the show with me because she wanted to lay down when we got home from Sylvan. The first half of the show reminded me of a house, uh, reminded me of a house show with special guest John Cena. That's what the first half of the show reminded me of. I, did, I, was, I was not having fun. I thought it was blah. Um... It was technically so I enjoyed. The first time of the show was just blur. Um I I have to agree with you. I mean, to me it just there's no excitement. There was no and Seth and Seth and Drew tried. And maybe I was just a, like I was I had a couple of things going on, so maybe I just wasn't into the match. Maybe that's on me. But you guys also watched the show. Oh, yeah. So like I, I don't know. Like it just it, it seemed like there was no energy until you got to past Cena. After Cena, the second half of the show was really good. Like I thought, right. the second half of the show was great. Right. Like, right. First half of the show was slow. Like yeah, I thought it, it was really slow. It just like the first half of the show dragged and no energy. And I, to me, I just played it like it, music in the background. I didn't really t- care any, you know, any way as far as what happened or take a peek. Like the only mm-hmm. time, the only big thing that happened was John Cena locked clean with Solzakoa. I did not see that coming. I did not, at any level, mm-hmm. expect Solzakoa to pin John Cena clean. Like mm-hmm. I, I figured. I, be- I have a problem with them making such a big deal about him being winless for five years. He didn't wrestle for the whole time. This that is didn't true. Count. What's funny about it? You know, what's funny about that, Sal? He um he's winless in singles matches. He's wrestled yes. more tag matches in the last five years than singles matches anyway. Like he had a yeah, match at the end of end of last year, the end of last year, he tagged with KO on SmackDown against the Bloodline, and they won yes. that match. <laughs> won that match. That's just hysterical about that whole storyline. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. And that's why we were all convinced that he was going to win because it made such yeah. a big deal out of it. <laughs> you know, I, I give them credit for fooling everybody. I give them credit for getting uh, fooling everybody on that one because we all got it. We all said it last week, and they fooled us. Like, you know, that. And yes. the the crowd, you know, shouting "Thank you, Cena." That didn't. That was surprising. I, that that, that, that whole thing felt like a send off. It felt like you tweeted it. It felt like the same, yeah. felt the same way. I felt the exact same way. Right. Yeah. Because then the next thing came up is is that was that Cena's last match. Well, it's Cole, I gotta give Michael Cole some credit because that was a great little speech at the end. That Cena's last match was a great speech to go out on. What's uh, how Cole was praising him and saying he was one of the greatest he'd ever seen. And, like I thought that was a great speech for Cole to say. To go yeah. off on if that was Cena's last match, or one of his last matches. Like I were feeling like he's gonna have one more match. I would, ho- I would hope that there would be at least one more, maybe a Mania, like something. Oh, you a just wrote my mind. You literally said the same thing. I agree with you, one hundred percent. Do it at Mania. Do one more match. Send him out in style. Yeah, because you know? it's John Cena. He deserves it. Like he deserves to go out in style. Do you know? he doesn't need to win because they normally don't. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do Do you think that Hell makes some sort of appearance on? Uh... War Games Survivor Series? I don't know. That's a good question. A lot of people were jumping on War Games saying, well, maybe he'll be the he'll be a part of the um Cody the captain. Well, well, Cody's the captain. He's on the poster. I mean, he's on the fucking poster. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but um, people are maybe he'll jump on Cody's team. You know, like, I don't think that's going to happen. Does anyone have any update on the strike? Because the last time I heard, there was an update, and then there was nothing. I've heard nothing about uh, strike lately. I heard that the two sides... We're close to ratifying, and there was something that came up that basically stopped it. Okay, and I'm looking here. As of 13 hours ago, there was no official deal. Right. And so, and the whole thing is still stemming on the AI and residuals. I'm looking at it right here. Yeah, I'm reading it right here. Yeah. Did so, you just post something on Facebook? I didn't do anything. I'm on – I'm looking – I'm Googling something. I'm not doing anything on okay. Facebook. Now Patrick just texted me. He's like, "Why are you guys talking about Jewish men not being able to dance?" <laughs> what? I'm not doing shit. We're not live. We're not live at all. I know. That's why I was like, uh... "Weird." There's no way in hell he would have known that. Like, there's no way in hell. Is, I, is, I know that. That's why I was like, "Did wait, you post something?" Is, no, is I haven't done anything. I, I the only thing I <laughs> people text to me. That's weird. Is he? Look at the run sheet. I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe he's did the he, uh, he like panda. <laughs> did, did he like tap into your? Uh, what is going on? Now? What is going on in relationships now that he's reading your messages? <laughs> Florida. <laughs> wow. Hey, 
<laughs> like, are you telepathic? What the he, hell is going on? He, like, even Mandy, even Mandy aren't that good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. I mean, that's that's like that that's like life like power. Is that like gay superpower? You could like <laughs> communicate throughout states like that. Like, yes. <laughs> that, that's like live live. Holy crap! <laughs> oh, wow, that's hysterical. <laughs> can we get Patrick on the phone? Oh man, that's no. <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> I just want to find out how he's like. Yo. Ask him how he knew that. I need to know how he knew yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I need to know how he knew that. That's amazing. Maybe he's got a hidden camera someplace. Like, I totally. I, I I have to, I'll like pause the whole show to know what the fuck just happened. Like, how the hell did he do that? We're not, we're not, we're not broadcasting live. I just double no. check. I literally just double check. People are doing a live show by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, double check on that one. Oh my God. Yeah, I just asked him. That is so funny. Wow. Okay. That completely threw me. Because <laughs> I was going to say, like, that was pretty quick for you to post that clip did, on uh, Facebook. I haven't done anything. Like, literally, I do it everything after the show. Right like, wow. Well, he's writing back. I need I to know. I need, little bubbles. I'm sorry. We paused the whole show. <laughs> I need to know what the hell happened here. Hey, it, 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 Hang on. Wait, wait. He's answering back. Oh. Uh, I, when I sent him the snap, it was on the uh, run sheet. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, didn't even catch, I didn't even catch that. That's uh. that is funny. That's very, very funny. Okay. I thought maybe he was like, yeah, that was, it was on the TikTok part. It was your fault. It was your fault. I, I thought maybe he was clairvoyant of it. That's the case. I'm going to ask him for the next Powerball number. Holy crap. That, that yeah, is no, right. for a loop. <laughs> Holy crap. Wow. All right. Let's get back to work. Wow. Okay. Let's get back to the red sheet. Hi, Patrick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Patrick. Wow, okay. Um I completely, wow, I completely got completely thrown off. Let's get back to this. Um Logan Paul. Logan Paul, yes. Logan Paul beat Ray Mysterio to win the US championship. I enjoyed Can this. I bring something up. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. I know you're probably gonna bring it up, but I want I wanna know. Oh go to the second, but go ahead. Go ahead, go for it. I know yeah. you're saying go spot, for it. The spot that everyone's been talking about. I watched the replay of it. He mm-hmm. totally saved Ray's life. He totally okay, saved yes, life. but do you think people are going a little overboard? Because they're like, ah, he would have been paralyzed if he didn't okay, catch him. Okay, but I like, saw the spot I saw. The spot I saw. When I watched it, I watched. It, I, I saw it live, and I was stunned. Like I, thought, I thought yes. Rick was gonna fucking break his neck watching it live. I really did. Um, but he had his hands down. I don't think that would have happened. What I, what I give credit to Logan Paul for here is his well, eighth yes. professional wrestling match. His eighth match, and he's he's literally stopping someone from almost hurting themselves, and then counteracting in live in live on the ring. There are people that have been doing this for ten years. They can't do that. Well, he, yes, no, I do. It, I do agree totally with you on that. that. I do agree. Yeah, he 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 caught it and reacted to it, which it may not I, be nearly as bad because it is Ray. Ray's been hurt so many times; it probably wouldn't have saved him. But you don't know that in live time. Yeah, like, you don't know I, that in real time. So uh, I will say this: I got to come in Logan Paul for 100%. catching and reacting to it, and you know, making. It's safe for Ray to continue the match. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. Hundred percent, I do too. Um, I just think people are going a little overboard with the comments that. Uh, I mean, it's social media, though. You know, social media goes overboard about everything. So yeah, that's no. I think. And then you have the flip side. Did you see the flip side comments? How? Oh, he was out of position, and he's so lucky that he got to him in time. And I'm like, no, it's a wrestling like, match. I didn't Again, see him out of position at all. I thought Logan looked great. And so did, I thought Ray and Logan had good chemistry. I thought the match was actually good. Right. Like, I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah. The match that kind of woke me up a little bit. Like, this match has got me back into the show. Like, I thought this match is really good. I, I kind of like the ending when you had Logan holding up the belt and you had Ray telling him, Logan, you know what you did. Logan, oh, no, you know, but, you know, but you here's did. the thing. I have a question for you guys. Go ahead. But the whole brass yes. neck situation. And his buddy came down. <laughs> Uh-huh. And he, and, yes. he, and and freaking um, and um, Sancho stopped him, and then Sancho put the ring in the ring. Yes, that for future reference. But he finally turned heel on Ray. Is that what that's there yes. for? Um, <laughs> yes. Before you even ask the question, yes, that's literally the first because thing. That's just of. so stupid. Nobody would do that. Like that's the first thing I thought of when I told him, like that's going to be used later when, in a video package. When, <laughs> when he turned heel on Ray, <laughs> when when I, when I saw how he just kind of left it in Locked the ring there, and like, ran after it the right spot, it you know. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of told me after the fact that then this is probably setting up a match for Santos to challenge for Logan Paul. Well, I, I, I'm still going with um, LA Knight, Logan Paul, WrestleMania. I'm sticking with that until otherwise stated. <laughs> so, um, but the other yeah. thing that 
that and Logan is the one kind of saying is that he's talking to Jake and he's trying to get something where Jake is with him in a match. So I don't know. I don't how think that's gonna that happen. Is. I don't think that's gonna happen. He's not problem is Logan to his credit has been training. Jake has not. Right. Like I give Logan all the credit in the world. He's been training. Right. Like CJ wasn't even mad. CJ wasn't mad when Logan Paul won. And he can't stand the guy, but he wasn't even mad because he saw the match. And he's like, oh, okay. I get it. It's understand it happens. Like this is one of those ways where it's like, okay. Yeah. It happens. What's what's that say? Hi. Okay, he said hi. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> Jake, Jake is the better boxer. I don't think he can make a smooth transition. No, I don't think so. And Logan, to his credit, is a performer. Like, I give him all the credit in the world. I will give him all the credit. Yeah. He, out of, out of the family, he's the more flashy brother. If, and I feel like we're also watching take. Logan Paul grow up a little bit. Like we're kind of watching him grow up where he's not as much of a prick as he was two years ago. Like, he's just not as much. I noticed that, like, in the, in the like, social media world, he's not as hated because he's not as much of a prick as he was like two years ago. Like, like he's not as he's, he's he's not as how I can't put it, not as aggravating as he was when he was with uh, the Miz. Or no, it's not even that. I, I think as a person, he's just growing up as a human being. He's just growing up, which is not a bad thing. I mean, I, he's just getting older, right. and he's just maturing. As a human being, <laughs> so it's coming out better on television. Like, well, and, and, it, it also helps that he's been actually performing like he's been doing this forever, right? And he's taking it seriously, which I, I think I has agree. been. Yes. It's like Bad Bunny. It's like with Bad Bunny. It's like with Bad Bunny back in the yeah, right. He took it seriously and all that kind of stuff. Logan Paul is taking it to a different level. It was like I'm doing right. this and I want to do it and I want to do this for a long time. So you know, I went on a tirade and my tirade was basically all in fun and jazz. And I am so it made for a great clip. <laughs> I am so glad that he's taking it seriously because he realizes that yeah. during a match, it's not just him that has the potential of getting injured, it's the person he's wrestling I with. Mm-hmm. So basically, mm-hmm. what they have to do is they have to do something together that makes them both look good and makes the match go well. Mm-hmm. Like uh, what happened on Saturday. Exactly. Correct. The other big thing that came out of Saturday's show was the return of one Kyrie Sane. Um, the the um, Hyra Princess is back. I don't think she's a Pyra Princess anymore, though, based on what we saw on Saturday. I don't think so either. And I'm yeah, she kind of looks like a Harley Quinn. That was the that's Kyrie from New Japan. Like that's the one that was in Startup. Like that was the character that everyone was like, "Holy shit, Kyrie's back!" Well, um, her, and if she's like, if she's even half half of the character she was in Stardom, we're in for a fucking treat because she was she's doing a great she was doing a great job in Japan. So like I'm intrigued because she's she's aligning herself with EO and I'm hearing word that it might be Kyrie EO and Asuka. Apparently they're a big they're a big team in, in stardom and bringing them back together is a very would be a massive, massive deal. That sounds like something Triple H would do. What was, you know, what what would do. was Kyrie saying? And it ties in perfectly too, because um uh what's her face? Bailey was the person that took her out when she left. Exactly. Like yeah. there's so much so storyline. Come here. back and now stick it uh, yeah, to stick it to Bailey long term story telling. No, oh, it's it's fantastic storyline here. Like I think this is great. Like there's so many good things about the story that's gonna work so well. Uh we're looking forward to it. I'm really it's, looking forward to how this is going message keep watching. Yes. And I swear that that's part of this figure. They put EO and Kyrie together in the commercial for SmackDown for Friday. <laughs> Like that's a big deal oh. to put that in the commercial. Like, like that's a big deal. I, they literally ended the SmackDown commercial for this week's show with Kyrie and um, EO together. So okay. we see so, a sub faction kind of being created. Is I have a it? feeling Bailey's turning face, but this is all said and done. Bailey's going to be baby face. Hmm. Okay, that's my personal opinion. Okay, and all Dakota, right. Dakota, Dakota still hurts, so she's really kind of this in the background anyway. But I have a feeling that that EO is going to turn on Bailey and form. This new faction, ah. Kyrie and Oscar. I have a weird feeling. Okay. That's my gut feeling based on everything right. that went down this weekend. Wonderful. So I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm really excited for it. I'm actually really, really excited for this. All right. Um, this past Tuesday we had um the um TKO had their first um public financial call as a company, first time officially, and a couple things came out of it. We'll get to the second one in a minute, but the first one because we, we I had to bring this up. Because it made me laugh so damn hard. (laughs) 
Um, but the whole book job also, I'll just read it. TKO Holdings said that Vince McMahon could lead to quote unquote negative publicity or have adverse financial operational impacts and could open up so open the company up to additional scrutiny or otherwise I can't I, whatever. But you know, in, the, in the SEC Exaggerate. Yeah. Exactly, thank you. In the SEC filing on Tuesday, I'm I'm saying in 2024, Vince McMahon Network, but can't hold it anymore. <laughs> There's no way in hell they keep him around in this is, company. Is, I just don't understand why they didn't realize this at the beginning. It pro- I have a feeling. This is my personal, personal opinion. Go ahead. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly who they were dealing with, and they outsmarted Vince McMahon. They so, promised him the world. They said, you can keep your position, you can be executive director, they can, you can be creative head, you can do all this stuff. Sucker. And all of a sudden, they sell, they sell over, and all of a sudden they said, Vince doesn't really have any power, Triple, I'm Paul Levesque, you're in charge of creative, the executive director's job, not really even a real job. So, oh, they so- outsmarted the master. That's what happened here. They outsmarted the master. <laughs> What's what's the old phrase? Get it in writing. Yep. Obviously, Vince didn't get it in writing. Uh huh. So now here's the thing with reading his statement. That's least for saying, Vince, you're screwed. Pretty much. Pretty much. We have a, we have a a saying at work because we deal with a lot of very important companies, and we always say reading is fundamental. <laughs> so I think that applies here too. <laughs> like that one. Reading is fundamental. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that's not like that, but no, that's it's it's crazy how this turn of events has happened, where it went from Vince Vince is going to be overpowered all of a sudden, he's like one of the most unimportant persons on the board of directors for the TKO all day. How did this happen in the year? This I will is, never know. Like this has been the craziest fucking year. <laughs> this is TKO's way of saying that we want to get rid of the cancer and we don't want to basically take any legal or financial responsibility for what he does. Exactly. So we'll mm-hmm. Cut out the middleman and you save yourself a lot of money and, and aggravation. No, I, I agree. I, I'm intrigued. This is actually more, I did not expect this to be what it is. But here we are. Like, is there a possibility in terms of Vince McMahon may have nothing to do with wrestling at the end of next year? Well, Which is unreal. <laughs> what? What does that That's fine by me. But how bizarre is that sentence though? Like that's such a bizarre sentence. I mean, it's a possibility. How many, yeah. how many decades has the family been in operation and power? 40, with, 60 years, at least okay. 60 years, at least. And to basically turn the helm over to your son in law, who. Oh, well, no, problem is it didn't. They they sold the company to Ari right. Manuel TK Holdings mm-hmm. and they put Paul Deck in charge. That's what right. happened. And, and they that's, to do with that. And that's because the people at TKO noticed the job he that Paul's doing and realized the product is better with Paul than with Dick. I agree. As a matter of fact, Sal, I knew you always... And it's to... funny how... Good. Good. I was going to say, it's funny how this could have all been avoided if he had just stepped back like he was supposed to, put Triple H in charge like he was supposed to, but left, left Stephanie in charge. The same, and the company, left Stephanie CEO. Yeah, left Stephanie in charge, and the money would still be coming in. Uh huh. And then you know, just fade into the sunset. Like I can honestly say, when we went to SmackDown a couple weeks ago. That building was sold out, and that was the biggest crowd I've been in at Pfizer in years. Like that place was packed. It was loud, and it was fun to be in that building again, like for a TV show. Like we've been to a lot of shows at the Pfizer, and that was the biggest crowd I've been in. I think since I moved to the state, that was a massive crowd. Like it was great to be involved in be in the building for that. And I don't remember it being like that for a very, very long time. So things have changed. And I was going to say, Sal, I know you always go to sleep before the third hour of Raw. But, like, the third hour of Raw, the last few weeks, have been great. Because the, his mm-hmm. Paul Beck is actually booking three hours of a show. It's not like, here's an hour of a show, and then we'll, we'll fill the rest. He's actually booking out a three-hour show. Which, again, I think it's Raw too long. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, at least he's doing the work. He's doing the work to plan on a three-hour show. Like, I appreciate and it. Since you, um, since you just brought that up, um, this just popped into my mind. When Raw moves, do you think they cut it down to two hours? It'll depend on where they go. And we'll talk about that all in a minute, because we'll yeah. talk about the um, TV stuff in a minute. Because It's a good question. It's a very, very good question. I don't have an answer to you yet. I'd love to know that. I think it depends on where they end up. 
So like if they mm-hmm. move to somewhere that only they only have a two hour block, then you have to shrink it. Well, like remember, like SmackDown mm-hmm. was on Fox, they had to be two hours because of news. Yeah. It's that kind of situation. Like, like that kind of thing. So I don't know. But, That's a good question. It's a very good question that I would yeah, love yeah. to know the answer to. Because triple because Paul Beck has gone on the record and said he prefers to do a two hour show than a three hour show. He's yeah. gone on the record and said well, that. I'm sure it's easier. Yeah. My whole thing is that with WWE, you really have no major quote unquote concerns because you've got Paul doing such a great job there. You got HBK doing a great job with NXT. And both these gentlemen are being in the business as long as they have also have the head for business and they know what to do, what not to do, and what pitfalls to avoid. And right. basically they're running things the way that I'm sure when they were wrestling would have liked to have been done, but it wasn't. So now not only are they paying it forward, but they're paving the way to say, Hey, this is the way it should have been done years ago, but we're doing it this way now. And we want it to stay this way for a while. All right. So let's move on to um some TV stuff, TV show stuff. I'm, I'm sending you guys a video in our chat, group chat on our phones. Um, it's it's sending right now. And I'm going to read what I have written here. Okay. I'm read what I have written in the run sheet. I will send you a little video to the company when I'm reading. Um, and yeah, so pro, uh, the fact that I have a, a sentence on the run sheet that says pro wrestling on the CW is one of the craziest things I've said I've, I've put down in a long, long time. <laughs> but there's two fucking stories having to do with pro wrestling on the CW, which is insane. Um, so I just sent you a video. Um, so the yes. Way, the Can NWA, I play it? So you watch it while I tell this story because this is this is what's going on. The NWA okay. TV deal looks to be in jeopardy because the company CW is really upset with the NWA for what they did on pay per view. This past week, where James, Father James Mitchell was shown um, for no context whatsoever, um, stoning cocaine with a group of wrestlers and um, doing whatever it is in the video I just sent you guys. Um, this is not sitting about well the CW at all. <laughs> and um, what are they doing? <laughs> so that is, they're in a lot of trouble. Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> Hold the phone. Hold the flipping phone, man. Uh, who signed off on that? Exactly. Now you understand okay. what's going on. Why don't you watch it again? That's how bad it was. Hang on. Let me. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head up. But if you wanted to basically, how can I put it? If you wanted to basically to put NWA out of business, that was the right way to do it because basically that's what you just did. You that, yeah. Put the nail in the coffin for NWA, brother Paul Mitchell. Oh, yeah, I, I, brother James, Father James Mitchell did that live on pay per view. I love their reaction. Like we're no longer on YouTube. We're no longer on YouTube. <laughs> that is that. I'm flabbergasted. Flabbergasted Ooh. is beyond that. I, I, mortified. <laughs> mortified would be a better Don't word. Break. No, I great. mean, couldn't you at least, like, as a joke, put, like, a bag of sugar next to that and just, like, pretend it was sugar? That's a good Flour. DX joke. That's a DX joke. But still, like... <laughs> but, I mean, holy to smokes. do something like this <laughs> and have it televised is just... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh... Flabbergasting! No! Moronic! Flabbergasting! Moronic! I mean... What was that, though? Idiotic. Gastingly. I don't think that's a word, but I'm going to write it down anyway. Yeah, huh? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back to my Jewishman. Oy vey! <laughs> oh my what God. What the no. hell? Exactly. Well, that's you know, basically, that's basically, happening right now. That's a big deal. So that, yeah, Basically, Christian would say, what the fuck? So that's happening. Um, so in the middle of all that, that happened on Saturday. That happened on Saturday night. <laughs> Wow. I can't stop thinking about that. Hey, Belcher broke that news on Sunday. Tuesday, we have the TKO Holdings press conference thing, right? During that, TKO and WWE and the CW would now that the NXT is being moved to the CW on October 2024. Okay, so I I, I was thinking about this, okay? Obviously, this, this didn't happen overnight. They must have been talking for a while. But it's crazy timing. It's insane so, right, But like, how, 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 <laughs> how, how did this all come about? 
at the beginning here, I have no clue how we got here because I didn't. And I was so I got home from work on Tuesday, and my phone goes off from on Jason Power. I was like, nice. So I I follow his Twitter account. I follow because he just puts the news up, but he doesn't put up a lot of news. So I, I like following him. And he put up an alert. It said the NXT moved to the CW, and I almost dropped my phone. I was like, what? <laughs> what did I, say? I literally stopped what I was doing. I was like, what? <laughs> So oh, shit, you, you're gonna have NXT on CW and hopefully other shows. Well, the NWA apparently is now being talked to just being on the CW app. After I think it just went down. That's still uh, not like a conflict thing. I don't know. That's a good question. I would love I, to know what the thing is because there's a like for instance, I'll use a perfect example. MLW, they got screwed because right. they because on what station were they on? The um Access? No, not access. The other station that I mean, it went over, um, I forgot what station it was, but they got put on Peacock stream live live stream because of their WWE contract. They're not allowed to have any other pro wrestling, so they had an hour block on this station on Peacock Live. They couldn't air because it was MLW, and they had to put something else up, up for that hour on the live stream because they weren't allowed to air MLW at the same station at WWE. They weren't allowed to do that. So I wondered if, um, yeah. Is CW still affiliated with Warner in any, in any you know, I'm trying to figure that out. People are trying to figure that out, too. The last I time think I heard it they, is. Were they were sold, from what I heard recently. Okay. The, remember, but they were sold, and then they and then they um changed. Like, the funny part is, the CW has been through a lot over the years. For those who don't realize, the CW was the, was the merger of UPN and the WB. Right. And then, it, be, and then yeah. um, it became the home of, like, like the big, oh, like, Paramount. Paramount owns them. So Paramount. Paramount owns them. Okay. Yeah, so CBS. Paramount Plus. There you go. But still, like, and then, um, and then that course, they became the Arrowverse. And now, from what I'm hearing, CW might wants to go the route of sports because they already have inside the NFL. They have Live Golf. They're getting NASCAR, and now they're doing the WWE. Okay. Yeah, I heard that today. That apparently, NASCAR is going over there. Seventy-five percent owned by NextStar Media Group, and then I guess the rest of it is Paramount. Well, there you go. That's intriguing. I'm intrigued by this whole thing. And back to your question, Stella, about Raw. It all depends on where they go. Because I've heard rumors that they might go to Amazon. And if they go to Amazon, it really doesn't matter how long the damn show is. Um, and then there's word. They, there's a whole bunch of question marks on what you do with Raw. And then there's the question mark that if, like, say, um, ABC or something like that wants to pick up Raw, or ESPN wants to pick up Raw, you can't put it on Mondays because you're not going to compete with yourself. Right. So what does that do? They move it to Wednesdays. And then AW has to move. So they're not gonna want to compete with Raw. So like a <laughs> lot of things are gonna change at the end of next year. Like we're gonna be dealing with remember five years ago when like Put when on Thursday. SmackDown was the thing when SmackDown moved to um Fox and then AW came into the picture and the NXT moved from the network. I made a graphic with like all the stations and where everything was. I'm gonna have to do it again at the end of next year. Because everything's <laughs> going to change at the end of next Can you- year. Can you imagine haven't signed their contracts yet? They haven't extended their extension yet. Oh, can you imagine if Raw moves to Wednesdays and TK has to be like humbled a little bit because <laughs> he's like off yeah. his rocker lately? <laughs> well, it's almost like the other way around when NXT moved to Tuesday because AEW is coming in the ratings, right? And it moved to Tuesday because they were humbled, they had to move. Because if they wanted to keep them on, but they had to move next day, it'd be the exact same situation. <laughs> but the other way around. But the other way around this time. Uh, imagine putting Raw on Wednesdays and you have the wars all over again. Or, like I, I said, it would be a war, though. I don't think so. If, 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 if AEW couldn't compete with NXT, and I know NXT was a little up, but that was a weird night. But they couldn't hold up with NXT. There's no chance in hell they could really hold up with Raw. Like, there's no way. So the next two months they would, would be very interesting. Yeah, they would we, have, we have to... two more contracts we're waiting on it, the AW and Raw. And what's interesting is I think it was a Mitch fan said on on everything today. Um that this feels a lot like the NFL, where it's all over on different stations. Right now, WWE is gonna be like all over on different networks and all this kind of stuff. And like you have to figure out where you're going and watching what night and all this kind of stuff. It's gonna be weird, just like the NFL is right now, where it's all over the place. And I wonder. Sure. If it's going to be like the NFL, where now, I noticed in the last like five years for the NFL, they actually put the graphics up on the screen. This game's on CBS. This game's on ABC. This game's. They didn't used to do yeah. that. So, they didn't yeah, used to no, do that in the past. Yeah. So, like, I wonder. So, 
are, are one of the things that uh -oh. AEW we're good. has. We're good, good. I, I, no, I thought I hit a button. We're good. Okay. So is one of the issues that AEW has concerning MJF? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a you lot mean, of the more twenty twenty four. Another no, as, far, as far as contract wise, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on with them right now. I would love to know more. The problem is they're not a public company, so he just tells us what he wants us to know, which is fine. I respect it because he just owns yeah. the company at all. Like it's respectable. They own the company. They're not public, but we're in a boat now where they need to figure something out quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's tough that their ratings they're... are down. Yeah. Like Dynamite was down. Collision apparently this week was their lowest rating ever in their time slot. Because oh, no. here's oh, no. here's where I'm looking at. Yeah. If if you lose a talent like MJF to competitor, then I think you're you're looking at the spiraling on the way down. Because if you can't hang on to a top talent like MJF, and he bolts for your competition. What do you got left? I don't I don't think he ever would though, because he would be way too censored. He wouldn't be able to be himself. He wouldn't be the, the, the type of character he would want to be. I don't know if he would ever do that. I, I think I under, under Paul, Paul, that might be, that, he might not be able to curse, but he'd still be able to be the character. He he would uh, he would be the abrasive or as we like to, like to see, our uh, son of a bitch. Well, look at look at like um look at like um and Ko. He he's just an asshole when he wants to be. And I mean, he's just an asshole when he feels like it because he plays himself. MJF he just plays the character himself. And by the way, did you know that AEW doesn't know MJF music? Really? That's own it. That is a um. It's one. It's like um. It's a public domain song. What? Yeah. So it's a public domain. And well, MJF public... music, MJF currency music is, is public domain because I apparently someone heard on a commercial recently. So basically, what? It's public domain, <laughs> they probably got it for like pennies on <laughs> the dollar. It's all of the Hardy's music. The Hardy's were public domain. What? <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing I heard this recently. Oh, wait, no, that's true because I can hear that in a commercial once. Yeah, I heard that recently that MJF music is public domain. Which is why I remember when I was first when we, were, when we were doing public relations stuff with AEW and I was trying to find the rest of the team music, I could never find MGF music. Well, there you go. Not available anywhere, and AEW doesn't own it. Oh, wow. <laughs> this background is appropriate right now. <laughs> You're learning a lot today, aren't you? You're learning a lot today. Wow. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Yes, I'm noticing this. <laughs> and mystified. Indeed. I, I think I found the title of the show, Fabregasted and Mystified. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually lie. It's going to be a short show, too. It's like, what the hell went on at the show today? What the hell went on at the show today? <laughs> that going to be a, a new tag team name? <laughs> there you go. There you go. So that is this week. It's, it's been a crazy, it hasn't been that crazy week, but the stuff that's come out has been fun. <laughs> it's been, it's been fun. I, you're, you're oh, one more thing I want to bring up on that, because we talk about Paul oh, and Beck. I was on TikTok the other day. And I and I sent this to Sal. There they somebody did an interview with um, Paul Levesque, and um, I can't even tell you who it was. And he broke down. Remember his health problems at the end of um the, the health issues he had a couple of years ago. Correct Heart problems he had. Yeah. Well, no new details. Well, he did a full sit down interview explaining the heart problems he had, and we almost lost Paul Levesque because he had a um an old water maker. And um, if he didn't get to the hospital when he did, he would have been dead. Oh my lord. Um, and he and he he wears the pacemaker and everything now too, which is why he had a rude hire. So like when we saw him at WrestleMania, not this past, but the year before when he came back at WrestleMania, um, how year was that? The um, one in thirty eight, WrestleMania thirty eight. When we saw him that day, that was his first public appearance since his heart attack. Wow, that day <laughs> that was the first time he came back in the public eye. So. We and, almost lost the guy that's now saving us for WWE. That kind of saving us. And, TV better. We almost lost him. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I've never heard uh, regarding him if there was any type of relation to his health situation to any type of storage usage or anything like that. Oh, absolutely not. He even said he was stunned he had issue because he was cleaning the whistle. He's he's the only one from the old DX and the old click that never even yeah, drank. The click, yeah, yeah. He never drank. He's the only one that didn't drink. Right. He's the only one. 
That's that's from what I, sober, he's completely that's sober. I understand. Right. So, I mean, I think everyone was thrown for a whoop when he had. Yeah, his so I just wanted to make sure I brought that up because that was a big deal this week. That oh. came out this week oh. on TikTok, and I was like, oh my god! I hit the style immediately when I was watching it. I'm like, this is See, crazy. And there's a reason now we know that he's more protective of his family because. Oh, that he, was another thing he said. He was he he cut himself off from everything from the minute he got the pacemaker put in all the way into WrestleMania. Didn't watch anything. Um, Shawn Michaels pretty much told everybody no one's allowed to call him for anything. Do not call him unless you ask me first. <laughs> um, and he got to spend time with his family the entire time. Like he even said, I got to pick up my kids from school, spend all this time. I'll never, I never want to take yeah. that away for myself because it, it's one of those, it's a shitty situation, but at the same time, he got to spend three months with his family. Uh-huh. Which is a big deal for any wrestler. It's a very big deal for anybody. And, and so. th- that that's why you know if if you look at it, he's more protective of his family now than mm-hmm. he ever was, and and now you know why. Exactly. And and, and here's the thing with with Paul and his family. He loves Stefan. He loves his daughters, mm-hmm. and he lives for them, not through them, but for them. And you look at. The pictures and the videos of them, and you could tell that everything there is genuine. Nothing is fake or forced. Agreed. Well, anyone got anything else, or we should get out of here. Uh, da, 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 da. I guess not. Uh, okay. let me see. Anything else on Logan Paul? No, no. I think we probably well wrapped up with the Logan Paul situation. All right. Well, Dad, I sent it to you to send us out of here. So, what are we closing with? Hey, we're closing with a new song that is coming from da 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 da. And you never guess, Rick Ashley, called what? "Never Gonna Stop." What? Yes. Why not? Everything. Everyone else is coming out with new music. Why not Rick Ashley too? Why Once else? again, I am flabbergasted <laughs> and mystified. And mystified. <laughs> and mystified. <laughs> so, all right. Well, then we'll get out of here. That's how. Take us away. Uh, uh, for more information on our show, including where you can find it on social media or watch the show on YouTube or TikTok, uh, go to the blanketsoftshow.com. Don't forget, please, 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 please keep, leave a comment or uh, uh, a rating or review, and we will read it on the show. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to focus. And, and, and we're not going to do what Father James Mitchell did. No, absolutely not. NWA. I will so, say a big announcement, by the way, speaking of social media, um, beginning of December, the Blake of South Show will have his own TikTok account. I've been I've been working hey. behind the scenes. Whoa. And we'll be starting at the beginning of December with our big year end countdown that we always do. So that's okay. going to be the first thing that goes up there. And then starting then, all of our stuff for the show will go over there. It's an I'm a personal TikTok account. We'll go over there instead. So okay. go follow the Blake and South Show on TikTok. Wow. Are you are you gonna force me to get TikTok now? Um I well if you don't have to have it if you don't want it, you know, I'll tag you and everything so you can everyone knows where you are. What if it what you know, if you I, I turned you into a threat that didn't happen, so like <laughs> what if you live in a state where it's illegal to have TikTok? It's only in there's only like one state for that at this point, I think, right? What? Something like that. There's one state that, that, that TikTok is banned in. I'm not even joking. Banded, How the hell are they gonna regulate that? I don't remember. There was a whole thing a couple of months back. And it, 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 it was dropping, everyone moved on. The problem is that all went down, and then all of a sudden there was two wars going on, so everyone stopped talking about TikTok. At first, it was just meant to regulate people in cool. government office because they were misusing it, and then it spread to okay, state the whole state, you're banned. Yeah, I forgot what state it was. <laughs> so, all right, Dad, take your thing. We can get out of here. Go. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure. And sorry, no ransom, Logan Paul today because I want to give him all the props and, and command him for his quick actions. So, uh, if you have a local independent wrestling organization where you live in, please. Go look at into these people and what they're all about, and they will show you that these are the up and coming men and women in the world of professional wrestling, sports entertainment that want to show you what they can do as far as their character, as far as their moves, as far as their promo work, as far as everything, because they want to get that big brass ring to a major organization. The way to do that is by showing you the public what they can do and entertaining you for two hours or more I'm and okay. if you go go to these men <laughs> but okay and if you go to these matches please act responsibly don't act foolish act like adults I don't do to- don't do cocaine don't, don't do cocaine, cocaine. <laughs> especially on, on some females you know cleavage what's going on in the world right now <laughs> so you know 
everyone be a little nicer to everybody. You know, it's we only got one world and one us, and it's all a better world if we all <laughs> work together and to be nice to each other, <laughs> and we can all be mortified and. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's mystified <laughs> all together. There it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. Um, next week we have John Parker coming on to help us preview full gear. You know, if AW gives us the card. Oh well, yeah, we're gonna have another crazy show. Yeah, you know, if they actually you know give us the card to talk about it next week, we'll talk about it. Um, that being said, let's get out of here. I'm <laughs> Blake. Um, so. I'm Mark. And you've listening to the Blake and Sal show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. See ya. That same, you got to keep in vivid. Can't do that to you for the feeling. Tell me it's just a feeling. Tell me that this ain't real. Tell me it's just a feeling. Tell me that this ain't real. Come on, tell me that this ain't real. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. Mwah, and good night. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs> Fuck them kids. <laughs>